Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Medical Today with me, Jared Ratnam. To be exact, it's episode 10, season 3.0. On the show today, we're taking a look at burns. If you have a burn or if you're scalded, uh, do you use butter on these burns? Now, that's a question we need to ask ourselves all the time. But fear not, we have a video that's going to talk to you about that. We also will be talking about early warning for brain and spinal cord injuries. Uh, what does all this mean? Well, we'll get back to that later. But for now, uh, we're going to walk through a topic that we've been talking about quite a bit in this season, uh, simply because we think it's a very, very important discussion to be dealing with at all times. We want to talk about myopia or the control of myopia once again. And joining me in the studio is Dr. Murphy Chan. He's been on before. He's the CEO of Icon Optometry Network and he's the Vice President of uh, uh, Asia Optometric Congress. Uh, also in the studio with us, uh, Miss Liu Chi Quinn. She's the uh, MD of Hoya Lens Malaysia. They both join us to give us their input about myopia and what we can do about it as Malaysians. Welcome to the show. Dato, it's a pleasure to have you back again. Uh, Miss Liu, uh, very good to I have you in the that. studios. I'm sure we're going to be glean a lot of information from you with uh, regards to myopia and you know what we can do as a nation to control it. Now, I guess uh, to start the conversation off, uh, it seems to be a concern not just for Malaysia, but also for other countries in the world. But uh, I think by and large, children are being affected by myopia and uh, there's an increasing number of them suffering or uh, having this problem which is known as myopia by the time they reach 12 years old now i think the simple question would be why is this happening oh well yes this is a concern and it's not only you know happen in asia but uh, globally uh, this is a, a big concern uh, uh, we have a study that showing that uh, uh, got the global uh, population by 2050, there will be half of the population uh, will be affected by myopia. And the study also show that it is not only because of uh, 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 the genetic, the reason of genetic, but also because of the, it, it is much uh, the cause uh, come from uh, uh, the lifestyle mm -hmm. that we have, mm -hmm. you know, the digital uh, devices that we, we are, you know, too frequent use. Right. Yes. But having said that, uh, getting information to put together a statistic in order to see what's going to happen in the future, or what we predict in the future, how does uh, someone like you and uh, coming from a company like yours, Hoya, you know, how do you glean information? Who do you work with? Is WHO involved in the tabulating of all the research done in order to come out with some numbers? Yes, uh, we have a R&D team. And then, yes, uh, we, we have gathered a lot of information from WHO uh, and also uh, some private uh, studies, you know, analysis. Uh, that, that is how we come out all the statistics and the numbers. Mm -hmm. And our R&D team is actually working closely very uh, with uh, some of the uh, private uh, uh, practitioners and uh, to come out, you know, uh, some uh, better, uh, good products uh, right. uh, to, to resolve. Yes, right. this to take this yeah. question further, Phil, Dato, I'd like to bring you in on this conversation. Now, uh, we, we know that by 2050, the numbers are going to be exponential, <laughs> going to be having quite a problem uh, globally. But uh, if you look at the uh, a small town optometrist, uh, does he or she have enough information to forward to a congress like uh, the congress you come from, uh, the Asia Optometric con Congress, in order to put tab tabulate all this information or to collate all this information, to be exact? Sure. First of all, uh, Jared, thank you for having me back here again. Mm -hmm. It's true. Always a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Now, it's truly, it's not just about global, but we are looking at Asia and we zoom into Malaysia and you're concerned about rural areas. Yes, today we are very fortunate because we have about 2,000 over optometrists uh, in Malaysia and uh, with the support of the government optometrists, we are able to reach out to the rural areas. Uh, with the proper eye care delivery uh, and one of the projects done uh, is called Avis. Uh, and blaupil and uh, with this uh, screening program mm -hmm. is very successfully to detect myopia or other eye conditions at a very early stage right so we we already uh, sort of on on a path to be able to ascertain the problem early on yeah. especially with children now i think the other question is uh what is myopia and you know, we, we we need to keep 
bringing out awareness about myopia just so you know when it comes to short sightedness long sightedness and uh, near far you know we kind of get confused with that so that's why <laughs> i want to go back to what myopia is myopia is indeed a, a very big challenge today because it's the most common or the first uh, major problem of eye disorder in the world mm -hmm. myopia has many terms like short sightedness near sightedness now all this why is it because it causes uh, blur vision when one looks far away for example if you are sitting here and you're looking across the, the, the room someone with myopia may not be able to see that now why is it this topic has been very concerned lately it's because myopia onset starts at six years old and from six to eighteen where you notice there'll be a rapid acceleration of myopia if it's not managed well so you know that's why we're talking about kids we're talking about myopia and what are the risk factors we're talking about myopia firstly higher risk for those who are below 13 years old that's why we take this opportunity to create awareness to the public secondly you know it's about genetics if one of the parents are short-sighted it risks about 25 percent the child will be short-sighted if both the parents are short-sighted then it's almost 50 percent now besides that the latest global studies reveal that ethnic ethnicity is also a main issue. Now, based on the world studies, East Asia and urban areas, and we are exactly there, <laughs> are having the highest Good rate of know. prevalence <laughs> of myopia. Yeah. Now, besides that, as what Ms. Liu has um, correctly emphasized, it's about lifestyle. You know, do all our children spend more than two and a half hours a day outdoor? There are some Australian studies shows that a child should spend at least two and a half hours outdoor a day mm -hmm. and not forgetting we are so influenced with the usage of digital device now all these are the risk factors which causes the myopia progression gets much more accelerated and concerned today right very pertinent point that they brought up i'm going to come back to you but you zo you zoomed in on east asia and we are in the hub of east asia mm -hmm. Uh, so we now know that myopia discriminates, okay, it doesn't happen <laughs> to everyone. Yeah. But the problem is, why did we know where it is, but why does it happen to East Asians? Simply because I think uh, generally, I think the way uh, children are brought up today, we are emphasized on close work. Uh, in order for the eyes to relax, you need to see at least 20 feet or 6 meters away. Look today, the child goes to school, okay, comes back home with a digital device, does a lot of homework, they don't really spend enough time outdoor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the nature of the, 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 how the child develops in this part of the world. Unlike right. some Western countries, they emphasize a lot of outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. So we hope that in the near future, we should see such changes because these are factors that we can reduce or manage myopia. Right. Mr. Liu, coming back to you, uh, I mean, uh, with what you do coming from the company that you come from, you guys actually uh, need to envision the future and then work making lenses, thinking about what's to come. Now, how much, uh, how much of research is, putting in, uh, is being put into the area of, uh, let's say, myopia or anything related to myopia? Uh, the company, um, we, um, we have been the, um, start looking into uh, a pi myopia control lenses mm -hmm. uh, since um, much more like seven years ago. Seven years ago. Yes, yeah, seven yeah. years ago. And uh, we have working closely with the uh, institutions, mm -hmm. universities, uh, Hong Kong Uni uh, Polytech University. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, actually came up this uh, myopia control, a very uh, new technology. We call it DIMS. And that can actually um, effectively. So, how, what's this new technology called again? DIMS. DIMS. Eh? D I M S. Okay. Yes. And, and that's an acronym for? DIMS, or the scientific name of uh, the Focus Incorporated Multiple Segments. And this technology is comprised of a central optical zone to correct the distance power. And this central zone is surrounded by the multiple defocus segments in which it will help to control the myopia progression. Defocus, incorporate multiple segments. So that, that's, that's the acronym. That's the acronym. Okay, and what's it telling us? Um, this lens basically is to help the children uh, with myopia mm -hmm. and it will help the children to slow down the, myop the progression of myopia. Right. Uh, 
and uh, it's it's uh, we have uh, done a lot of clinical study, and the trial show that you know we have all the proven uh, that it it does uh, 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 brings that uh, you know at least sixty percent you know around sixty percent of slowing down the mm -hmm. myopia progression. Right. So mm -hmm. now I, I think the other question would be how do you identify these conditions? Now there's myopia and conditions are on the periphery. How how is this identifiable? Well, Gerard, I think the first thing is, do, as a practitioner, I emphasize that all parents should send their child to a proper optometrist eye examination at pre preschool. And get good possible. lenses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know? So that's important because I think guardians and parents should be aware because if the child doesn't complain doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Based on statistics, one in three child in primary one is having a vision problem. Now, as a practitioner, I like to share this information to all guardians and parents, the simple A, B, C guidelines. Okay. A is for appearance. Mm -hmm. Notice where the child is always squ uh, squeezing his eyes. Right. Is it squinting, squinting his yeah. eyes? Mm -hmm. Or something like sometimes they just like to blink a lot, or the eyes are always red or tearing. That's the appearance that the parents should take note. Right. B, behavior. Whether the child likes to go very close in front of the TV, whether the child has a mm -hmm. normal head posture or goes very close when writing, or tend to skip lines. Or sometimes the child, when they are not seeing well, they become very quiet and introvert. So that's a behavior that the parents should pick up. Right. And C is complain. Mm -hmm. If a child complains, he can't see. Mm -hmm. He could be malingering because sometimes the child wants to wear a glasses because his friend is wearing a pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. So it could also mean that he has complaints of frequent headaches. Right and also could be uh, as double vision or sometimes also so just when he double vision he sees two things uh. it could be yes. out of focus mm. right you know you, you totally understand you're wearing glasses for many years right, right. you would know that when your power has increased mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. it's not like a sudden drop it's a gradual thing right. so my uh, personal advice for all parents out there please send your child to see an optometrist so right. that they can get a proper eye examination mm -hmm. because to get the accurate diagnosis is so important. Right. Uh, I mean it's interesting you talk about squinting and, and I'm very quickly going to relate a story to you about a friend of mine in school. We used to laugh at him because he used to squint and look at the blackboard and this was in the 80s and yeah. then he used to go in front and take notes. He used to look at the, uh, the board and take notes. So years after that, we've all left school. We're all uh, closing into our 50s, although I look 25. Uh, <laughs> Check your so, vision. Yeah, yeah. Check your vision. <laughs> so I met him, not, met him not so long ago and I said, hey, you know, it's really funny. We used to laugh at you doing that. Why did you do that? He said, uh, I couldn't see the blackboard True. and I couldn't afford a pair of glasses. True. And today, this guy <laughs> a, is a hematologist in one, one of uh, a leading... Mm. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Hospitals in Malaysia. So uh, the things we don't know, now we know. So yeah. squinting is a problem. The reason yeah. is problem. because, Gerard, when you squeeze your eyes, yeah. it creates a pinhole effect. Yeah. So because naturally, a human does not like to see blur objects. Mm -hmm. They will adjust their head posture. They squeeze their eyes in order to see better. Mm -hmm. So what your friend did was generally a natural thing any other child would do when they have a vision problem. Right. Now coming back to you, Ms. Liu, uh, in, in the age of digitalization, how do we stop myopia from progressing? Well, Gerard, we cannot stop. Uh, you, we can't we stop this? We cannot stop myopia. No? No. Yeah, mm -hmm. But there's a way to actually control mm -hmm. the myopia progression. Okay. And we need to monitor it, you know. Um, like uh, Dr. Murphy um, uh, shared just now, that uh, we really need to get uh, uh, eye care practitioners right. to check, you know, to monitor, to uh, uh, give a suggestion, uh, advices, you know. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, they also talked about, uh, they also talked, the last time we had an interview, uh, those who came in talked about outdoor activities, which are very, very important. And you you did mention or allude to outdoor activities. Each child needs to be out at least two and a half hours. Uh, what do you have to add to that, uh, Dato? Uh, I think generally it's not just about the eye. Mm -hmm. As a physical body, it's good that they spend some time outdoor getting the sunlight, uh, have a bigger space because in terms of vision, why do we encourage them to be outdoor? Mm -hmm. It's because the eye will be at relaxed state when they are seeing more than six meters or 20 feet. Right. Tell me today in our indoor environment, not, we are not that lucky to get 20 feet 20 size feet. of room. Right. So when you relax, that's where uh, your eye muscles are much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Remember those days? 
the, our grandfathers would tell us, look at greens. Yes. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, well, you know? Is that true? No, not the green colour. Yeah. If it works, then just take a green card and look at it. It will not happen. Mm -hmm. What the, our far-sighted uh, grandparents uh, advise us because Greens those days mean looking at the paddy fields. Right. Look at far away. Far. Okay. So when you look at yes. far away, yes. then your eyes will be relaxed. See, mm. and, and and I have to admit here that until a few until what say uh, a month ago, I thought looking at green was just looking at a green plant no. or something. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> so, no, it's not. <laughs> Oops. <It's> not. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Now uh, a lot of us are unaware of uh, what is available to correct and control myopia. Miss Liu, maybe you can walk us through this. You know, there's there's just so many options out there. Now, what do we do if we are adults and uh, what do we do if we have kids? Yeah. Uh, actually, we have a few uh, uh, options uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have eye drops, okay, and then uh, we have uh, also contact lenses that can uh, help, you know, to uh, for the myopia control. Right. And then, uh, of course, the most uh, safe an easy way is to have a pair of uh, uh, spectacle lenses, mm -hmm. uh, myopia control, orthomix lenses. Right. Uh, that, that will be a few options that we are right. available so you, in the market. When you say contact lenses, and you, a lot of people are talking about progressive contact <laughs> lenses these days, you know, that's one of the new things. But I guess the, the other problem that comes around, and we did also talk about this in the last interview, was the fact that, you know, in handling contact lenses, hygiene is of utmost importance. Yes, yes, yeah? yes. Now, um, when when uh, prescribing uh, contact lenses to people, uh, do you do uh, optometrists talk to them about hygiene? Maybe both of you can answer because <laughs> as a lens maker, uh, sending it to uh, the optometrist, uh, there must be a sort of uh, okay. When you give people this, make sure they know this, this, and this about the lens. You know what happens uh, in this process? Maybe I would like to uh, yeah. elaborate on yeah. that. Yes, contact lens is a medical device, so it's not that like you can buy off the shelf right. through the internet and so forth. Because uh, but number people one, are, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, yeah, yeah. they should not, because yeah. it, it's just like any type of medication. You need to get a qualified practitioner to identify what type of lens is suitable for your lifestyle or what you need, mm -hmm. and that's not all because you need the proper follow-up. Right. You, know, you can get the right lens, but you need to be follow-up. Mm -hmm. So uh, as of we can, I would encourage those who, just slightly off the topic for contact lens, mm -hmm. uh, you need the qualified practitioner to examine the eye and then to advise you and manage from there. Uh, I would like to emphasize just now when you mentioned about contact lens and related to myopia. Now, the, the options to correct uh, the, or to manage or control the short-sightedness of myopia uh, uh, as what Ms. Liu was saying about the eye drops, which is atrophine. Um, it's very effective, but some are concerned about the side effect de uh, depending on drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay, the contact lens today, uh, AutoK or autocarotology, is the type of hard lens which you use uh, during sleep. Right. Seems to have a very good uh, pr uh, effect, but some children may not like it. Right. So we have the soft type of contact lens, not the normal contact lens. Mm -hmm. So don't say that just got a contact lens and will control but your But these are contact lenses. The designs lens are different. For extended wear? No, it's no. meant for this purpose. So the extended wear lenses are the hard lenses, and the one I told right. you. The design is not the ordinary contact lens. So you need to see autocarotology or the specialist on these lenses to get it fitted. Right. So it's the soft contact lens which you use during the daytime you need to get a qualified person to understand because the designs are not the normal designs. Mm -hmm. And finally, as what Ms. Liu emphasized, uh, normally for me as a practitioner, I'll start on the ophthalmic lens, the normal lens, which is easy, non-invasive. And these designs, again, it's not those progressive design, or it's special design with the technology to address two main reasons why someone becomes short-sighted. Right. There are two theories to it. Mm -hmm. Just in short, one's about the lack of accommodation where sometimes when you do too much close work, your eyes needs to focus. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, you find you cannot focus tr truly back to its normal position. Right. You notice, Gerard, if you're doing your smartphone, yes. after a while, when suddenly someone calls you from far away, you look it up, appears blurred. Yeah, it takes it a while. That, yes, that, that lag can adjust. promote elongation of the eyeball, which causes a progression in short-sightedness. Right. Now, the second theory is about the defocus of the peripheral. Because when you look far, 20 mm -hmm. feet away, everything seems to be aligned and focused on the dot of mm -hmm. the retina. However, if you're doing close work, there is a bit of peripheral shift. That means a, a hypropic defocus, meaning that your retina 
which is a light sensor, will detect the light and that's why it encouraged the eyeball to go slightly longer. Right. That's also the reason why. Right. So, in, in short, not every option works. As a practitioner, I use the fifth combination. It's a combination of all these four factors. I emphasize that you need to get the accurate diagnosis. Make sure you so tell them about the habits. Tell them to improve the lightings, not to do things in the dark. To rest their eyes periodically. And also we talk about safety, about UV filter, blue mm -hmm. block. And also make sure the lens right. is safe for the children because when they play, it should not crack. Mm -hmm. So these mm -hmm. are the things that's where see a qualified practitioner. Right. You'll right. Be very, very quickly, uh, we've got about one minute left, uh, or rather 30 seconds left. Miss Liu, how do you want to end this interview? What's your advice to us? Thank you very much, Dr. Murphy. Miss mm -hmm. Liu, very quickly. Yeah, um, like uh, what uh, Dr. Murphy has shared, mm -hmm. there's uh, many options in the market and uh, you need to look for a qualified uh, uh, eye care practitioners uh, so that they can actually give you uh, a good you know, uh, advice or uh, information that uh, which is uh, more related or more suitable to your child. Right, yes. right. On that note, thank you very much Dr. Murphy, Ms. Liu. It was a pleasure and an honour having you on the show. We just spoke to Dr. Murphy Chan, the CEO of Icon Optometry Network and he's also the Vice President of Asia Optometric Congress. Also joining him in the studio is Miss Liu Chi Quinn. She is the MD of Hoya Lens Malaysia, talking about myopia right here on Medical Today. Stay with us. We'll be back just after a short break. If you look around you, joy is pretty much everywhere. Your favorite TV shows, your best friends, your favorite selfie. See? Joy! Now try looking at them again with Hoya Sync 3. All the vibrant colors are now in full detail for a clearer focus on the moments that matter. At any angle, wherever you are, magnified, true to your needs. That's happiness without a strain and it's yours for as long as you have it on sight. Because your eyes are not made for screens. Sing 3 lenses are Hoya, eye for detail. Hello and welcome back to Medical Today, episode 10, season 3.0 with me, Jared Rutnam. We now move into early warning for brain and spinal cord injuries. And to do that, we have a neurosurgeon in the studio with me, Dr. Rahmat Harun, alias Harun. He's a consultant neurologist for KPJ Selangor Specialist Hospital. Now it's uh, Harun, alias Harun. Why is that, Doc? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Thank you for having me today. No problem. Uh, the reason for the name, uh -huh. uh, the alias Big Cause, uh. when I was in Form 5, uh -huh. uh, one of two IC, uh -huh. uh, to make it, uh, my father's name is O, oh. R O N. I was being being written from my birth certificate, R U N. R U N. So when I I want to ratify that the only way to do this is, is to have an alias. Have alias. Oh, okay. So now we know and we understand. So anyone who meets you the next time won't ask you this question now. <laughs> so you, basically, you, it's just Harun is my father's name. Yeah. Doesn't limit the O or U. Yes, but I think I think the more important person now today, well, your dad has done a great job bringing you up as a son. You're now a neuro neuro neurosurgeon, yes. um, and you are considered. I mean, in the medical world, you cardiologists all like the rock stars or the celebrities, can? <laughs> <laughs> but look at that. I would say that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the central nervous system because we're talking about uh, early warning for brain and spinal cord injuries. Okay. So let's just understand what the central nervous system is. Uh, as the name implies, mm. central nervous system, meaning that it's actually uh, an organ of a command center for your body. Mm -hmm. Central means central. Right. Nervous system is all the nerves, mm -hmm. all the things that, that you need to have to live in this world. I mean that you you have brain and spinal cord, but you never see brain and spinal cord, but, but they are the command center oh of your, the whole body. You have to register, you have to accept things, you have to assimilate, you have to receive all the information before you can execute. Mm -hmm. So. The way the the way that we are doing now, I mean, the way you talk to me, the way I talk to everybody else, 
the things that we do, whatever running, walking, is because of this brain and spinal cord that actually receive information and give out the and execute the command to the rest of the body. Right. So it's the super highway in our body, so to speak. Uh, yes and no. No, you don't like to use. That? I don't like to use the super highway. Uh, you don't like. Okay. I like to use the command center. Command center. Uh, meaning that mm -hmm. you you control everything without being seen. How timely for us here at Bernama because we are always talking about the command center. Well, yeah, now we, you, off the airways when we were talking, yeah. you, you, you talked a little bit about spinal cord injuries, but you said, I want to emphasize on spinal cord injuries, uh, brain and spinal cord injuries because people don't quite understand what it is. What do you mean when you okay. say, we don't understand what you're saying? Uh, I would like to loosen up the, the terms a bit. If okay. you if you Google, if you type spinal brain and spinal cord injuries, they will always talk about trauma. Okay. Why I want to loosen the term because injuries mean an insult to the system. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, if an insult like if you don't receive blood flow, then you get a stroke. If you have too much blood flow, you can also have a stroke. Same thing. It's just an insult to the uh, to the organs, uh, injuries. So can can neuropathy be be uh, yes, classified yes, as one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, now nowadays they, they uh, when we talk about stroke, uh, they, they, they they loosely use the term insult, mm -hmm. brain insult or brain syndrome. Uh, so why I choose the topic of brain spinal cord injuries is that to pertain to the to the to, to general views that. Okay, if you have something wrong with your brain and spinal cord, mm -hmm. you should recognize it, or your counterpart, your friends or family who sees you should recognize it and get and seek medical attention and get it treated. I do believe that you need to do something early. Basically, you prevent things from getting worse. Mm -hmm. By the time you come to any neurosurgeons or any neurologists or any doctors that you come, for example, come comatose. It should be too late. Right. You are expecting a miracle from us, which we are not God. Of course, they are saying Nusri is God. Mm -hmm. No, we are not God. We can do as much. Uh, if we can uh, reverse the process early on, then you can prevent things. Right. So you, you, you are suggesting that we need to be able to see. So if I have a partner of my, I'm living with my mother or brother or sister, I should know if something with him or her is wrong. When when you say something is wrong, meaning what balance? That's uh, that, yeah. yeah. That's, that's perception that's, that's, of depth. That's, that's, yeah. what, that's what I mean. I yeah. mean, you yourself, uh, you know your command center. Uh, mm. When you have early sign, for example, the most the commonest early sign is headache, mm -hmm. uh, and then you live with it for about what five ten years. You just take up pills and that's it. But in actually, if it comes something sinister, for example, when it change behavior. For example, you have headache and then you have a numbness, or headache you have a weakness. That's actually something else is going on. So, so when you say okay, okay, kita senang cerita lah. Ha. Headache, you have numbness. Numbness where? In your in your extremities or extremities, ha. legs, uh, face. Meaning that something is happened to your brain. Okay. Uh, but first thing we have to understand, brain and spinal cord itself doesn't have any nerve pain. You mm -hmm. you do tak ada Basically, otak itu sakit. Tak. Yeah, nah. uh, kita okay, so we're using the wrong term. Ha? Otak sakit is wrong. <laughs> don't, please don't use it. Stop. Or not, you'll get, get doctor angry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I like to give an analogy. Uh. Bila tangan sakit, when you got a pain on the hand, is is you got something or you got injury to the hand, you can see. Uh, or if you cannot see, uh, your your command center sense it, then you oh sakit, uh, and yourself you're gonna seek a treatment. Right. But when you have something happen to the brain and spinal cord, mm -hmm. uh, they themselves uh, doesn't have pain centers. They themselves where they feel they don't feel pain because they don't have sensory to the brain doesn't have sensory. Right. What happened is, if, for example, if you have. I would give an example, something, a mess or a, a, a tumor or tumor. Some, a blood clot. Mm -hmm. What happened is you stretch the, the pain, uh, the, the stretch the dura or stretch the, 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 the part that covers the brain and spinal cord. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that covering has pain 
sensation mm -hmm. not the brain and spinal cord itself but the covering then right. you have pain or you have ache uh, depending on where it's located and these are the one that you take it lightly uh, example is headache headache you say okay sakit kepala darah tinggi mm -hmm. whatever and it change behavior and then you feel your face numb or you have uh, ringing in ears yeah but as malaysians when you say face numb ringing in ears hantu konsi bomo exactly ah. the same kita thing kita pergi bomo dulu <laughs> exactly oh, this ah. is what i mean i ah. mean if you have headache with others ah. uh, i give an example i got i treat uh, uh, a man who has numbness for one year and he came to me when he has twitching of the hand involuntary a involuntary movement mm -hmm. uh, sudden yeah. movement uh, for a few seconds and mm -hmm. then it lasted for a few minutes at that time at that point he came to me when asked from the history uh, he said i got numbness uh, before this for how long how many years one year already tapi bila of course lah bila kita kebas orang mana nak percaya yeah. you can't really see right. you, it's not in your face and right. it's, it's not evident and bila kata you kata kebas kebas yeah. apa evident uh. Uh, that's what I mean uh, it's, it's, it's common center look kalau kebas pakai minyak angin exactly <laughs> <laughs> itu <laughs> memang Malaysia punya style <laughs> lah, kan? <laughs> <laughs> that's us as a that's country yeah, yeah, okay. I mean I also do the same uh, thing uh. Uh, but of course uh, I do it when I know It's not it's not nothing wrong with me because I play rugby and I know I kebas itu sakit itu I buatlah yeah. kalau misalnya kata it doesn't go away okay. then it should raise an alarm okay. uh, raise a red flag for me I mean right. kalau kebas lepas main rugby seminggu okay uh. tapi kalau dah sebulan kebas sebulan setengah tiga, tiga tahun bulan, uh, okay. tiga tahun hello oh, yeah. something something is wrong somewhere. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to do something so I th I, I guess the lesson here is We always ignore pains, especially uh, uh, pains with regards to uh, neuropathy. You know, if you get uh, that's a, just a sexy way of saying you get numbness on your hands or, or on your periphery or your legs, but no one cares about it, right? Yes. Okay. So what are you telling us now? Because you also said off the airwaves when I was talking to him, he said your BP shouldn't be more than 120 80. Shouldn't be more. So some doctors say 130 all boleh lah, can lah, you know. But it shouldn't be over. Why do you say that? What 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 evidence do you have to back this up? Because some doctors say 130, okay, what 140 still boleh what? Uh, based on guidelines. Okay. When you have hypertension, mm. uh, we know that uh, we have class one, class two, class three. Mm -hmm. Class one is above 120 to 1 130 1 to 1 140. Class 2, 140 and above up to 150, 160. And the rest is yang tinggi-tinggi semua tu grade uh, class 3. Tinggi, tinggi, um, tinggi. Meaning that the the higher grade you are, the higher chance you're going to have So problem. over 140, like 170, 180, all Formula 1. Formula uh, that one, one is <laughs> yang super highway, yang fast track <laughs> to to injury your brain. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so Formula 1 to, to in, injure your brain lah. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. So, so uh, basically, what you need to do is What the guideline says, when you have stroke, which is bit too late, uh, this blood pressure need to be brought down to the normal blood pressure, which is 120 over 80. Okay. What does you say? Meaning that you should not have more than that mm -hmm. in the beginning. But because you live so long with sakit kepala, makan panadol, BP tak check. Uh. Bila tu sakit uh, kepala. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. BP ada check. Ada yang beli beli mesin uh, simpan ke awal. Beli, tapi... Tak beritahu siapa ah. uh, 140 Okey lah kot Lepas tu ah. Next week ni 160 ah. Makan Kepala tak sakit Tapi ah. BP high ah. Oh tak ada apa dah ni ah. Lepas tu Check juga BP uh, Sakit kepala uh, uh, Take Panadol ah. Lepas tu Check BP 180 Kepala sakit Tak ada Dan Okey lah ni kot ah. You never consult A medical Or physician uh -huh. You need to go And see doctor Why you BP Is more than that Right So That's what I'm. What I mean by you. Yes, you can monitor yourself. In mm -hmm. fact, I do ask my patient. Mm -hmm. You have your uh, blood pressure monitoring. Please do a diary. I want to see whether I need to do something about it. But what happened? You pegang, simpan, 
tak 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 begitu orang doesn't ask any physician and right. consult anybody so even if you keep all that data and you don't ask anyone waste of time now yes. here's the other thing yeah. here's the other thing some people they have like brain hemorrhaging so they call okay uh, they they've been admitted into a hospital and I'm at a hospital mm. and then the family will start talking ini saya rasa macam ke oh ni can 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 that be fixed uh, once brain hemorrhaging starts yes no that's that, that's that. can can boleh yes. you're saying can be fixed yes okay Uh, how and when? How and when? Ah, okay. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the size. Uh, if you talk about uh, blood hemorrhages, if you talk about uh, clot size, even small, the only thing you need to do is just blood pressure control. Mm-hmm. It will cause away blood clot dalam brain macam lebam dekat tangan. It will take times. Take about at least two weeks before it disappears. Mm-hmm. Same goes with clot. So clot. Uh, blood clot in the brain small size you can leave it be uh, provided you control your blood pressure okay if big you have signs then you should take it out uh, the, the guideline says if you have more than 50 cc mm-hmm. uh, your condition from alert becomes stuporous not talking or uh, even just do nothing BP 240 very get it fixed before you become what we used to say when you GCS3 mm-hmm. what I mean by by 3 you kick you jerit you ketuk you pukul there's no response oh, oh. that part dah too late mm-hmm. bila you cakap you know, I mean if I'm mata, kicking you and you're not responding yes you <laughs> kick the person late, not responding yeah. you pinch you inflict pain there's No respond whatsoever. You shout. You put a bull horns to the ear. It uh. doesn't respond. I Minute mean, is too late. Okay. So that time, if you have an uncle or what in the hospital, jump panerai uncle tu kat mana? <laughs> so that's the thing. We, see, the problem is we take these things for granted. Yes. Okay. So when we talk about neurosurgery, we want to talk about all the intricacies of neurosurgery, but we don't want to talk about base control of hypertension. Yep. I think that's what you're getting at. Yes. Yeah. I am. Uh, so. I, I guess half of Kuala Lumpur is hypertensive. People either I think ha- more. yeah yeah people are you know doing three jobs after work they are going driving driving yeah. grab car after work and this brings about a lot of stress and tension in the body. Now with taking hypertension medicine, the some people are now saying oh kita kalau nak makan hypertensive medicine kita baik pergi yang alternative kita jangan pakai yang 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 doktor bagi because they are drugs. What does it mean when you go for alternative? Ah. It's a change of lifestyle. The change of lifestyle. I mean, you. No, but we are always looking for a magic pill also. Moringa exactly, leaf. Exactly, but there's no such this, a magic that, pill. Ah. Uh, you have to do certain things uh, to achieve certain goals. For blood pressure control, if you do four jobs in a day, then you should think back. What's wrong there? Mm-hmm. I mean, not four job. In different different companies or whatever, you do one this after another without resting. Okay, that's actually okay. So that that's lifestyle change, lah. Lifestyle yeah, change. Basically, lifestyle change. Yeah. A bit of exercise. But if you're hyper hypertensive and if you need to control it, well, what 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 is your advice on taking uh, hypertensive drugs like diuretics? Then you have all your there's many types that you have your satan so on so forth. Now, uh, do you recommend it? And do you think it should be taken long term? First of all, you need to find out what's the cause of hypertension. Okay. If the hypertension caused by the atherosclerosis, mm-hmm. high cholesterol, so you should include blood pressure medication also with the cholesterol. Mm-hmm. But the, those two come together usually, usually most of the time to go to. So same. if you're on statins, of course, like you're going to get yeah. body aches, lah. Yes. That's where people start. Questioning, you know, should you be taking statins? Yeah. But I think risk studies have already been done, yes. also, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Even even you have, uh, we we look into stroke. Stroke mm-hmm. actually the the permanent deficit or permanent damage, but TIAs is just a small. Mm-hmm. We like to call it small stroke, uh-huh. uh, which is reversible. You have uh, no, not small. We like to call it mild, like great. Mild, mild stroke. Mild, mild stroke. <laughs> the mental one. <laughs> mental stroke. Yes. Okay. <laughs> When. <laughs> When you have those, <laughs> it's a warning sign okay. that you need to do something about. For example, you need. So TIA is mental stroke, yeah, mental latent <laughs> stroke. 
Yeah, it cut yeah, and goes. Yeah, yeah okay, it, it comes. Uh, and it comes and goes. Mm. So you need to understand that this actually, whether you have high blood pressure, you need to control it. You have a cholesterol, you need to control it. You need uh, when diabetes is out of control, mm -hmm. uh, you need to control it. Uh, hence, even if you have that, if you really have a true stroke, true stroke then you need to be on those drugs to prevent it to get another stroke mm -hmm. so you need to be aware of this uh, you need to get treated you need to get uh, yourself understood that this actually can prevent right uh, before it becomes a disaster okay so if you look at matsale countries and all like yeah. you look like uh, uk and yeah. all that you know after people reach four series after their 40s yeah. they start taking like uh, a small dose of uh, what do you call that? Aspirin. Yeah. Uh, baby aspirin, they yes. call it lah. Seventy-five mg yeah. or maybe less. Now, uh, why do do we not practice these things here? Uh, lack of awareness. Lack of awareness. Maybe. Lack of awareness. But uh, but do you recommend that? You know, if you have if you have risk factor, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're Indian, if you're Indian and Malay, risk factor is already there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. But but uh, we know that. Uh, for Indians, their their, their risk for is higher. Higher. Uh, so aspirin is it's quite a quite a good thing for them. Okay. Um, uh, for for us Indians, we need to cut down our mutton. That's 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 basically. <laughs> no, no, no. It. <laughs> I think I think I go against that. You mutton, will, You okay. like mutton? Mutton okay. Uh, lamb lamb okay. okay. Uh, not beef. <laughs> not beef. Okay. So I, I, Indians don't have that problem. So I think uh, Hindus don't have that problem. But I think. Uh, the, the no, what I mean is the the the, the vessel vasculature of, of Indian is slightly differs from the others. So differs from I the others. So we have to be very careful, yeah. As, be as a whole, whole yes, yeah, as a whole, right. Uh, but yeah, as I said, if you reach forties, mm -hmm. you don't not only have a hypertension. Mm -hmm. If you don't control this, you can have sudden death also. Okay, which is bleeding from the aneurysm. Right, uh, which we we which which we have few. Episode few of the the renowned people who talk and suddenly just die. Nine, yeah. Uh, there's only two ways you can die: either you have died from brain insult, brain injuries, or you got a heart problem. Heart problem usually come with pain. You know that person in pain and die off like in movies slowly. Slowly. You can travel five kilometers and die. It die. Uh. For brain, it just. Sudden, sudden, yeah. So you need to take care of those things to prevent those things from happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, interesting, interesting. Because I know a lot of people who don't have brains, but they're still living. In <laughs> I, I don't understand how this happens. But you know, that aside, coming back to yeah. uh, early warning for yep. brain and spinal cord injury. So saying, if you feel your face pulling and all, people start panicking. Yeah. Now, what can you tell them as a neurosurgeon? What can you tell them? Uh, oh, that can stroke down. I know, like you know, sometimes, sometimes it's just okay a, yeah. uh, impingement uh, uh, of nerves. Okay, uh, yeah. what you need to differentiate two things: mm -hmm. uh, is it just a local problem, mm -hmm. or is it a brain problem? Right. For example, if a local problem, just face numbness. Right. Please get it checked because it might be just a nerve that impinge, or you have a, what you call trigeminal neuralgia. Mm -hmm. That's a simple story. Okay, there's a term you use just now, TIA. Okay, TIA is a mild transient stroke. Transient ischemic attack. Okay, so it's called a transient ischemic attack. Not nothing very big. It sounds all very big, but it's just what is uh, known to us as a mild stroke. Yeah. Okay. So now I think the bigger question is: is that is, is there really something called a mild stroke? No. And and a, and a when stroke. you got a stroke, you got a stroke. Uh, you got a stroke, you got a stroke, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So the only the only difference is how severe the stroke is. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one that we really look into, the one, the one, the one that we really want you to be aware of, when you have what we call the acronym FAST, F A S T. F A S T. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, face. Face. Arm. Speech. Time. Okay. Think about this. Ah, huh? face, arm, speech, time. The acronym is FAST. F A S T. Face. Um, speech time okay for you yourself you have feel different in your face suddenly you talk very so you got two components face and speech okay and then you feel your arm cannot move which arm left or right whatever B whatever whatever okay. one they side. usually say if, you, if it's your heart it's usually your left arm now if that's because of the referred pain pain okay but for your stroke uh, for, for for this fast it will be one side your mm. arm, your leg cannot move, and your face will be 
same side mm -hmm. fast but actually for you as a patient it doesn't really matter when you involve face your arm is not moving your legs doesn't move your speech involve get help as fast as possible mm -hmm. if you see a, a, a friend a family muka sengit lah mm -hmm. Cuba angkat tangan <coughs> Tangan tak boleh angkat uh -huh. Bukan kita pergi picit-picit Kita macam yang dalam viral Picit-picit semua okay. okay Actually it's a stroke uh -huh. uh, Early sign of stroke That you need to get it treated. Yeah but you also have that uncle Who'll come to you and touch you and say Tangan tak boleh angkat ah, Rasa ini angin ni ah, and, uh, That's uh, uh. That's why I want people to be aware of Yeah angin is a simple explanation uh. So I try to make it simpler for that. Okay, we got two minutes. How do you explain angin? Eh? If if the Pak Urut, when he touches me, anywhere he touches angin. Ini angin ni. Itu pun angin. Difficult question uh, to answer. You are neuro neurosurgeon. Simple, yeah. simple uh, to stop people from no, questioning. No, and I'm, I'm not laughing at that. No, no, I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean uh, uh, what I mean is, when you say angin... You also been to Pak Urut, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, what I mean is angin uh -huh. is a simple way to, to explain things, uh, but it's uh. already explained. It explain, but it doesn't explain. Yeah. Uh, when I told you this angin, okay, then you how to throw the angin, uh. the so called okay. uh, urut, bekam, uh, brr, banyak <laughs> cerita lah. <laughs> okay. So, but the thing is, you need to understand that for me, you if you want to treat something, you need to know the pathology. You need to know what's wrong with you. You're right. Then you know what to do. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be angin lah. Angin, angin everywhere. Yeah, lah. angin everywhere uh, lah. If you don't know the pathology, it's angin lah. Uh, come to me, so I, I actually, I, basically, I don't know what's happened to you, uh. what's wrong with you. It's angin lah. Angin. It's an angin. Okay. We've got Alright. one minute left. What would be your advice to us uh, before before we wrap this interview? I, I think this is by far one of the most enjoyable interviews I had <laughs> because I can relate to it. So, um, what would be your advice to us with regards to early warning for brain and spinal cord injuries? La? When you feel funny, mm -hmm. seek treatment. When you look at other people, look funny, please seek treatment because that's the early sign. Mm -hmm. What I mean by funny, uh, I don't feel right. I always do things but suddenly I cannot move my hand. That's funny. So when you feel strange, mm -hmm. uh, orang kata buang tabiat. This mm -hmm. is the the word I, I always talk to people. Right. Buang tabiat, uh. Uh, aneh aneh saja. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, feel funny, feel strange, something not right somewhere. Right. Please seek treatment. Please seek. Because maybe it's actually involved your brain and spinal cord. Right. On that note, Doc, it was a pleasure having you in the studio. We hope Thank to you have you much. again. We just spoke to Dr. Rahmat bin Harun. Elias Harun. So it's Harun, R U N, Elias H A R O N. And he came here to join us to talk about early warning for brain and spinal cord injuries. If there's one thing you want to take oh, uh, take home from here, it's fast. Remember fast, fast again, once again. Uh, face, face, arm, arm speech, mm -hmm. and time. Face, arm, speech, and time. If you see anything wrong with your face, arm, speech, and time, please go see a doctor immediately and remember when it comes to pressure and i'm going to say it i'm going to quote this man because it's been said by a neurosurgeon your pressure should always be 120 80 you should aim for that anything lower is a bonus anything higher is not very good on that note stay with us we're going to take a short break and come back right here on medical day thank you very much doc thank you
What you put into your body today will shape your life tomorrow. So be sure of good health with Blackmores. Begin better every day with Blackmores. Welcome back to the final segment of Medical Today, Season 3.0, Episode 10. We'd like to thank Dr. Rahmat bin Harun, a neurosurgeon who came here and made us laugh so much and taught us so, so much uh, on today's episode. Now, from there, we're going to move into a video. Uh, in this uh, season, we've been bringing you videos on a weekly basis talking about uh, emergency uh, problems that we have and things, first aid mistakes that we make. So today, we're going to take a look at putting butter on a burn. Now, every time you have a burn, you're always using toothpaste or butter. Is that the right thing to do? Well, uh, let's just find out by watching this uh, video that we put together for you. The mistake of putting butter on a burn. You've probably heard the tip to put butter on a burn, but this is bad advice. Never put butter on a burn or pop any blisters that form. You could damage the skin and cause an infection. Any greasy substance on a burn keeps the heat in. This could make it hard for a burn to heal or be properly treated. So what to do? Well, place the burned area under running cool water for at least 5 minutes to reduce swelling. Then gently dry the area and keep it loosely covered. You can apply an antiseptic spray or ointment or aloe to soothe the area. If it starts to blister, changes colour or seems infected, get medical treatment immediately. That was a little video for you with regards to putting butter on a burn. Now, the more important thing is to place the burn area under running water for at least five minutes. And what you're doing is to reduce the inflammation or the swelling. That's what you want to achieve first. Now, with any emergency situation, I want to stress that if you cannot handle it, please call 999 and get some advice from them as to what you can do. On that note, if you do have any questions for us with regards to Medical Today, or if you'd like to have someone on Medical Today, you'd like us f uh, to interview someone on the show, we'd be more than happy to do it. All you need to do is send us an email, send it to ask at medicaltoday.my. That's ask at medicaltoday.my, and we'll get cracking on your requests right here on Medical Day. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget on episode 11, we have more uh, amazing topics coming your way, more interesting facts on episode 11. This has been episode 10, season 3.0 of Medical Today. I'm Jared Rudnam. Have a great day and a fantastic week ahead.